All right, y'all, we are back with another video. And before we start, please put prayers in the comment section for Donald Trump. Please put prayers for Donald Trump in the comment section. I say this every video. We're going to get to the bottom of what really happened during that shooting at the rally, because obviously we see Kim Cheetah. She's hiding something. And by the way, Marjorie Taylor Greene, she just straight torched Kim Cheetah. In Congress, and we're gonna be talking about that too. But I want to bring y'all to this right here, cause like I said before, I'm gonna I'm trying my best to keep y'all up to date, you know, with everything that's going on, because we know, like I said before, Kim Cheetah is hiding something about this shooting, and she don't want to tell us. So now we get new information that this guy flew a drone over the entire rally. He had a drone over the entire rally that's now just not getting talked about. So we definitely finna get straight into that by Liberal High Mind. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. That way you can stay up to date with everything that's going on. And uh, like I said, man, they are trying their best to hire something. And we ain't stupid. And we see what else that they got going on. They want to use Joe Biden dropping out to try to cover up Donald Trump, you know, getting shot and stuff like that. So they, they, they trying to I see what they trying to do. They trying to get everybody to stop talking about Donald Trump. And talk about Joe Biden bagging out who gonna replace him. Nah, we ain't studying none of that. We already knew Joe Biden was gonna bag out. We already knew that. We still focus on uh, Donald Trump almost losing his life. That's what we focus on right here. And we gonna get to the bottom of what happened. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight into this, y'all. Let's go. Wow, just wow. You know, it's one thing when you see the video footage, with everything going on, all the people panicking, all the noise, all the movement, and of course the movement or lack of movement of the cameras. You know, it's one thing to analyze all the video footage, and it's another to put the day's event in absolute detail in an mm -hmm. animated 3D render, simulating the bullet trajectory and everything else that happened. There's a 3D render that everybody's talking about. I want to take a look at it. Let's have a conversation. Of course, you know, we got a lot to talk about. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so let's Let's first start off with the clip. Here's an animated grayscale 3D render showing us all the details about what happened on that day. Take mm. a look. This is a 3D illustration of how many bullets were fired and their trajectory that struck three people at the Trump rally on July 13th, 2024. This is the area we're going to focus in on. Here you can see the three victims that were injured by gunfire and where they were standing in the bleachers. We're going to turn around and demonstrate exactly where these bullets came from. This model represents Thomas Crooks. His position can be seen here in this image, which illustrates exactly where he was. Turning around, we can see the path of all the bullets that were fired from this location. I placed a 10-foot red disc downrange to represent what an average shooter could hit easily. Now let's take a look at this first shot fired. Coming from our key location, bullet one grazes President Trump's ear. This is the same bullet that hits a spectator in the stands. We know this through video evidence. As President Trump is talking, the first shot rings out just after he says, take a look at what happened. Something to say. Take a look what happened. We can see the vapor trail of a bullet strike, which is the same bullet that struck President Trump's ear a split second earlier, and this video is this location here. Wow. Back at the podium, President Trump is shot and grabs his ear, falling to the ground as more shots rang out. In total, there were seven or eight shots. So let's rewind and watch this at regular speed. Take a look at what happened. With all that gunfire, it's easy to understand how these spectators were injured, even though they were not the target, including the sole spectator who lost his life that day. Wow. Just say it. Just say it. As we circle around, we can see how all the paths of the bullets were hitting in the location of this forklift machine, causing one of the hydraulic hoses to burst. Ah. 
Holy freaking moly. You know, I'm not usually one to say this kind of thing, but in this case, I'm sure we're all thinking the exact same thing. It feels like divine intervention. How close was that? The shooter had a direct Man. line of sight on the president, and by pure miracle, seemingly by God's hand, Donald Trump just happened to look at the big screen at the Jumbotron the moment that trigger was first pulled. What are the chances? Now, there's a couple other viral videos as well, again, really depicting visually how close this was. I want to show you guys those as well. Take a look what happened. Oh. <laughs> you know, just astonishing, truly miraculous. You know, like I've mentioned Man. previously, one inch closer, just an inch towards the right, a slight little, probably from that distance, millimeter adjustment to the right, and the course of American history would have been forever altered. But of course, not only did this clip show us just how close it was, it also, again, visually shows us how ridiculous this whole ordeal was. You know, the fact that we have a digital reenactment here, just casually going through the motions, oh, well, you know, there was just a shooter perched up on the roof there, right across the field. Mm. The fact that that's even a thing, again, totally mind-boggling. And it's this shot right over here that's the most shocking. I mean, just look how obvious it was. You have a slightly sloped roof and a head popping over with a scope and the response from Secret Service, not a care in the world. Brings us right back to the same question, you know. I and we've been saying that for the longest, so you telling me the Secret Service did not see this guy head over the roof. So what they did was he they let him fire off those shots. They, he fired off seven shots, seven to eight shots before the Secret Service decided to take him out. And then you got Cam Cheeto just sitting up here lying. She needs to resign. She knows she's in on this crap, that she stays this. She knows she got something to do with this. She knows she got something to do with this. That's why everybody's been calling her out. Why haven't Cam Cheeto did any press conferences talking about, you know, uh, we're going to get to the bottom of what really happened at the rally. I'm going to fire some people because they wasn't doing their job. Why hasn't she done that? Have y'all noticed that? She haven't done it. She haven't done like any little press conference where she's out talking about this. I think she only did with like an interview and then she just got pulled into Congress. But she should have been talking about this. That she going to get to the bottom of it. it rather, she got to fire some people who didn't do their job. She hasn't done none of that because she don't care. She knew about this guy sitting up there. He was suspicious from the beginning. He been suspicious. They already knew about him. But yet they let him keep on circling around walking. He had a ladder, had a gun, and, and was able to get on top of that roof, let him fire off all those shots, taking out somebody, shooting President Trump, and, and hitting two other people before they shot that gun at him. This just don't make any sense. And I told y'all, I'm going to talk about this every single day until we get some answers. Every single day. Because we haven't got any answers yet. So if I got to keep on digging, checking out video clips and stuff like that, I'm going to do that because I want to get to the bottom of what happened. Because like I said before, Kim Cheetah, she's hiding something. This woman is hiding something. She knows exactly what happened. There's no way that this guy was walking around with a ladder, with a gun, and was able to get access to that roof. And then saying that they already knew about him with 30 minutes beforehand or an hour, they already knew about him and still let him fire off those shots. I mean, this is just ridiculous. This is ridiculous. This, that woman, if Joe Biden don't fire that woman, he got something to do with it as well. And a lot of, a lot of people have been calling out Joe Biden about this because why haven't he fired her? He did that fake speech as if he really cared about Donald Trump. Joe Biden don't care about Donald Trump. He wanted Donald Trump to be shot. He wanted Donald Trump to uh, be taken out. Why hasn't he fired Cam Cheetah? I'd love to give all this intricate, eloquent analysis of the events, but really it all boils down to one word. How? How was this allowed to happen? 
It's literally the most obvious, high priority threat location. And that on its own in isolation isn't even the worst part. Cause it's one thing if it's a high priority risk location where the perpetrator made some maneuvers and got there really quick and just, you know, happened to go on a stealth mission, evading all law enforcement personnel in the process. You know, it's one thing if that was the case, but as we keep learning, that's not how it happened at all. They mm. spotted this character acting suspiciously, not just once, not just twice, but on four separate occasions wow. before the first shot rang off. They wow. saw him four times being in places where he shouldn't have been, doing things that he shouldn't have been doing, and not a single thing was done. You know, the whole point of this video is to get a very clear, sober accounting of the events while we're starting to get a more detailed report. This morning, new insight into the final moments of a 20-year-old would-be assassin, as we are seeing new pictures of Thomas Matthew Crooks right before Saturday's shooting. Local police taking these pictures when they first noticed the shooter, and these pictures of the items found on the roof, including a black cell phone and a gray wireless transmitter authorities say he intended to use to remotely detonate explosives in his car. Wow. A source with knowledge of the investigation telling ABC News about the searches found on the gunman's phone. The date and that was another thing. Was he, was this guy, see, this the thing, the guy, he was, if y'all hear any noise and stuff, somebody's outside the, uh, my house uh, mowing and stuff like that. So if you hear any noise, that's, that's what that is. But other than that, this guy was planning on blowing up some stuff. If he couldn't take out Donald Trump, what was he going to do? Was he going to park his van by where Donald Trump cars was located and then press the button to detonate it? Was that what he was going to do if he couldn't take him out? So this, this shooter had plans on trying to take out Donald Trump. Why? What other reason would he have a van that's full of explosives? So that what made me think, and a lot of more other people think, he was going to park his car somewhere close to where Donald Trump was going to be leaving out there, wherever the case may be, and try to blow up that car. The, I mean, something has to be did about this with Kim Cheetah not firing anybody. She's not stepping down. She refuses to resign. Something has to be done. If she don't want to resign, she needs to be fired. Of Trump's rally, major depressive disorder, the Democratic National Convention, and bomb making. Images of FBI Director Christopher Wray, Attorney General Merrick Garland, and other public figures found on the phone as well. And investigators are looking into whether the shooter used a drone to surveil the rally site sometime before the shooting. We are also learning it's possible the attack could have been thwarted as late as six minutes before the first shot was fired. At 541 Saturday evening, a sniper with the local SWAT team put out a description of a suspect lurking around the ARG building. 24 minutes later, a radio call. That suspect spotted at picnic tables carrying a backpack. One minute later, the sniper who first noticed him left his position and went to meet a patrol officer. Two police vehicles moved in position. But at 6.12, those shots rang out. All right, so Phil Lipoff right here with more on that. And Phil, mm. what stands out to you the most about what we're learning here? Well, Gio, I think it's twofold. First, the shooter's preparation. As this investigation proceeds, we are realizing this wasn't a spur of the moment thing. He had that detonator we just saw in those new pictures uh, that connected to explosives in his car. Investigators looking into the fact that he may have flown a drone over this site in the mm. days prior uh, just to get a lay of the land. And then the second part of this is the timeline. As they're putting together this comprehensive timeline, we're realizing he was there. They knew he was there an hour and two minutes before the shooting and then just six minutes before a sniper left his position to go and find a local officer. To Just like I mentioned, they knew about this guy an hour ahead of time. Knew about him an hour ahead of time and refuses to do something about it. They could have been took this guy in. Could have been arrested him. On, they seen him on four to five different occasions and didn't do anything. And this is the question that Cam Cheetah was getting uh, asked and she couldn't answer it because she's a liar. She knew exactly what was going on. This is uncalled for, for it's been with nine days, 10 days, and nothing has been done. Nobody has been fired. No accountability. Nothing. This is unbelievable. A man lost his life. And, and Kimberly Cheetah, she refuses to fire somebody? That is crazy. I find him. 
and then the shots were fired. It's just incredible to think about that and see all of the new timelines that we're seeing here. What's the latest and what's the next part of this investigation? Well, obviously motive is a big deal. Everybody's still trying to figure out some of these shootings, you have a manifesto, you have a note left behind, whatever. And this is now a week in and we still don't know. This that. is a week in and they saw the searches on his phone. He searched for the DNC as well as uh, President, uh, former President Trump's rally. He searched for other politicians. So motive, but motive is almost secondary if you think about it to the fact that this was allowed to happen in the first place. That this information in this hour before didn't get back to Secret Service commanders there or we don't know that for the fact, but Secret Service commanders didn't know about it on the scene and they took the shot after he was able to take shots. So the head of the Secret Service is going to be on Capitol Hill Monday answering those questions. And some big questions ahead. All right, Absolutely. Phil Lipoff, thank you so much as always. So let's go through that. At 5.05 p.m., Crooks was seen walking outside the window with a sniper team inside. One of the snipers inside saw him looking up to the roof and observing the building and then disappearing. At 5.41 p.m., he came back with a rangefinder, sat down, looked at his phone, and at that point, one of the snipers took a picture of him, took out his rangefinder, and the sniper radioed the command post. And then at 6.05 p.m., Crooks returned for a third time with a backpack. The snipers called in with the information that he had a backpack and said that he was walking towards the back of the building. Now, of course, some people might say maybe they didn't have enough time to react. He looped around the building, went to the roof, and shot right away. There wasn't any time to react, but the first shot was fired at 6.11 p.m. So from 6.05 to 6.11, they simply made a phone call. Hey, this guy's going around the building. I spotted him with a rangefinder 20 minutes prior. Now he's got a backpack. He's moving moving all kinds of gear and looking at the top of the building here. He's using a rangefinder on the counter snipers. He was suspicious enough, apparently, to call into the post command and to take a photo of him, but not to act, not to secure the back of that building, not to stop him, search him, interrogate him. Make it freaking make sense. It simply doesn't. And I keep asking wow. the exact same question, how? Now, of course, we don't have those answers, so we really don't have much to conclude here, but I will conclude the video by saying, once again, thank the Lord that President Trump is okay and Yep. ready to fight another day. It was so close to letting a seriously sinister evil force seize the day. Anyways, that's pretty much. Well, there you go right there. Obviously, they knew about this person. Look at all these occasions that they spotted him and did nothing about it. They, I mean, this is unbelievable. Like I said, I would still be breaking down stuff, see if I can find new footage uh, or new videos that liberal high mind may drop that, you know, he might drop details that I couldn't find or I didn't know about. So salute to him, you know, for doing that. Salute to liberal high mind. But the, this right here is crazy. Something has to be did. I mean, you if you look at the time, 605, 602, it, they knew about him and just, and, and just did nothing. And even spotted him getting ready to try to shoot at President Trump and was um, what we hear, who told them to stand down? Was it Kim Cheadle? Was she the one that, that told him to stand out and not shoot and let that guy fire off those shots like that? I mean, that right there is just crazy. So y'all let me know what y'all think about it in the comment section. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch y'all in the next one.